Hello, a very good afternoon to you and um, thank you so much for joining us today on this very program which is dubbed Why is Father's Day a Silent Celebration? Today is going to be very interesting and I'd like to welcome you especially those who are watching us live on Facebook and our viewers also on YouTube and also all those who are listening to us live on Supreme Praise Radio, Faith Channel Radio, and then watching on all the social media platform. It's 19th of June. The day is 19th of June, and it's a day which has been set aside all over the world to celebrate fathers. But today we want to look at something here, something that has been way overlooked, way overdue. But the question is, who is going to talk about it? It will only take those who are really ready to face all the wrath that will come up there. And today we couldn't find none other than one person I know. He's got a thick skin. That is why he is here today with us to discuss this very topic titled, why, Why is Father's, Father's Day, Day a silent celebration? celebration? Before, Before I introduce him, let me just read a short bio about him or his profile. <clears throat> he is an international relationship consultant and family advocate, a television and radio con counselor consistently crisscrossing the major media stations of Ghana, such as GH1 TV, TV3, GTV, TV Africa, Sunny FM, and a host of them. Currently, the author of 42 profound love-oriented books. He is the principal and founding president of the Kelly Daniels Love Academy, mobile and online. With hundreds of students graduating with a basic love relate. Love, love leadership, leadership certificate, certificate, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> the the advanced, advanced Love Leadership Certificate and the Mature Love Leadership Certificate. That tells, that tells you that today our program, program is going to be very interesting. <clears throat> he is a graduate of the Word of Faith Bible Institute, Wolf B, the Clergy Academy Division of the Bishop David Oyedepo Ministries, known also as Winners Chapel Worldwide. He holds, he holds a, a first, first degree, degree, a master's degree, degree and a doctorate degree, all in Christian, Christian counseling from the prestigious Christian, Christian Leadership <coughs> University, US of A. a. Wow. wow. <clears throat> While he travels across cities and nations propagating the gospel of love through his conference, he also hosts regular home-based love conference in Ghana, which is now headquarters headquartered in, at the National Theatre in Accra. In his, his capacity as an outstanding commun community leader, humanitarian, humanitarian and counseling practitioner to several thousands, he has been appointed the Director of Ghana Affairs Accountable to the Caribbean African Faith-Based Leadership Conference, US of A. <laughs> A liaison to the World Bank and IMF faith-based offices, seeing to the welfare of all Ghana faith, civic, and corporate associates, including being a liaison to the White House Office of Faith-Based Partnership and U.S. U.S. Department of State Office of Religious and Global Affairs and other bilateral faith-based faith agencies at the United, United Nations. He, he believes, believes that the authentic preaching of the word of the, of the world, world peace is inseparable hinge on, on the message of undiluted love of God. Wow. wow. So, so if this is just a bio and a profile of him, it's taking me four minutes to read. That, that tells you this man is loaded, loaded and I have, I have none other than Kelly Daniels with me today to discuss this very wonderful program. Kelly, good afternoon to you, and thank you so much for joining me from the headquarters, Accra, Ghana. Thank you very much, sir. It's a privilege to be online with you. I do not take this for granted at all. Um, I'm humbled to be here, and I say thank you a million times. Hello to the viewers as well. Thank you for having me. 
Thank, Thank you very much. much. <coughs> um, I must also um, apologize for the late start of today's program. We're meant to start at 5 p.m. UK time, 4 p.m. Ghana. But we, we realized that due to um, a little misinformation, miscommunication, our Ghanaian and other parties felt the program was going to be 5 p.m. rather at their various places. So we had to meet it halfway. Pardon us for that. Well, the good news is today we are live on set and the program starts. That's now. Kali, Kali let, let me just, just go straight, straight to the point. point. Right. Before, Before I, I do that, happy Father's Day to you, Kelly. Oh, thank you. Happy Father's Day to you too. So how has, how has your Father's Day, Day been? Oh, overwhelming, especially, and this touches my heart, I intended to say tomorrow on social media, the number of people who have reached out to me to say happy Father's Day, are obviously in their thousands, but what moves me more is that from what I see, many people who have said happy father's day to me are actually men and i'm i'm thinking that's very touching you know i mean when a man tells a man happy father's day uh, that's something for me which i don't have the luxury of time to explain but it's it's heart melting it's heartwarming warming for me and i'm grateful that god has chosen me to do all the things that he leads me to do so yeah happy father's day to everyone Okay. okay. All right. All right. Listening, and I, I say to you, my... yeah, yeah, Kelly, go on, please. Kelly, Kelly please, please go on. Go on. Kelly, Kelly, can you hear me? Um, I, I see you talking but i can't hear you talking okay, okay. all right, all right. I, I believe that is enough. Enough. all right, all right. So, so let me first find out from you kelly, kelly. Why, why has father's day, day become a silent, silent celebration, celebration? Because, because if we cast our, our minds back to mother's, to mother's day, day we, we look at the media, media we look at you know the noise the anticipation the you know the weight and everything the shops everywhere mother's day is approaching Father's, Father's Day, Day is not being like that. that. Why, Why do you, do you think, think it has become a silent, silent celebration? Well, thank you very much, sir. There are two major umbrellas to it. There are two major reasons to it. One is primary and one is secondary. I don't know which from where you want me to start, but let me go start with the secondary reason, first of all. The secondary reason is that... Um, the father's role on the average, on the aggregate, has been downplayed by the, by the males themselves. Um, <clears throat> nobody chose to insist that Mother's Day should be more celebrated than Father's Day. It just happened to be what we have experienced, but there's a cost to it. Secondarily, I would say that the fathers have allowed it to be so. Um, if you do, do your, your job, job, even your enemies would comment, comment on, it. on it. Even your enemies would, would applaud you and critique you at the same time. But if there's almost no job done, there's nothing to critique, there's nothing to applaud. So you're just going to be lying bare. That's a, a secondary reason. And there's a lot more I would have said on that, but let me just go to the primary reason. The primary reason is that most men who have the privilege of having children have failed God. And the reason is because they do not understand what fatherhood means, what parenting means, but believe me, I know that they can tell what orgasm means. So they know very much about orgasm and what makes orgasm happen, but they lack the, the understanding of what gives you the right to experience an orgasm. And that is where the problem is. Many absentee fathers 
many, many, many present and absentee fathers, though they are actually physically there. Many, many, many um, flings of oxen without the woman even knowing exactly who made that happen. So on the long run, we can see that um, it may not be the irresponsibility of men that causes um, the lack of the celebration of Father's Day. It is the ignorance of men that makes us uh, downplayed in terms of celebration. Now, what is the ignorance here? The lack of the understanding of who you are and whose you are will present to us what you are and we are meant to take it just like that. Now, who are you? You are the masterpiece of God created in his image and likeness. That's the barest minimum every man should understand. That alone puts you at a mental pedestal to know how to communicate the capacity of your content in relating with mankind, society, or mother nature. Now, taking that away, knowing who you are, another aspect of the, the, the coin is knowing whose you are. If you know who you are and you don't know whose you are, you have a limited um, manual content on operating on who you are. And because you don't know who you are and whose you are, you, you, you duplicate your own kind after orgasm, with the same Kelly, Kelly if, if you can, can hear me, you are, are mute. mute. Okay, okay, so, so um. Okay, okay, so, so Kelly, Kelly is on mute. We are trying to rectify, to rectify that. Kelly. And as long as you don't, the authenticity of the information, uh, sending it, becoming transgenerational, what the generations after you keep having is everything but the authenticity of who they are and whose they are. I and the Father are one. As he is, so am I. These are scriptures I don't need to tag exactly where they are for the lack of time. But you see, we don't know our identity, and so we can't act likewise. We only act based on the mental calculation of what we assume we are to live, pay bills, up upgrade our statuses for community to clap for us, and then we die in our 70s, 80s, or 90s if we live that long. But then that's a transgenerational empty way of living. And so our offsprings have little or nothing to hold on to to say this is what our father or our grandfather passed across. Now, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the women who obviously don't know who they are and whose they are because you cannot have a woman without a man. Shaka to Bahata. What I mean by that is a woman was taken from a man. Without a man, there would have not been a woman. So when people say, oh, but you were born of a woman, so respect women. Yes, I will respect women for the rest of my life. But without me, they wouldn't have existed. Without my ring, they wouldn't have ever shown up. So therefore, the credence goes back to the beginning of time. It was with a man, not with a woman. A woman was absent. It was when the man at some point was operated upon, we ever saw that women were relevant. Otherwise, the earth was just fine with or without them. That's not to say that too much um, slighting is supposed to be on them. No, we celebrate them a more than 100%. But then a woman cannot replicate the trueness of humanity, of mankind, if the men don't teach them. So, so what, what we, we celebrate, celebrate on, on Mother's Day, Day is their affectionate response to nurturing. And that ends it most of the time. But that's just a fraction of what womanhood actually is, of what motherhood actually is. 
the, 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 the tender approach to raising, raising children, children comes naturally, not by any information, not by any, it's just, it just comes by natural intuition without being taught. And so that's what, what we, we celebrate. celebrate. But we forget the spirituality of womanhood. We forget the necessary intellectual fueling of the personality of the woman. I don't have the time to go into all of this. And all of this can never unfold if the woman is not taught by the man she has. And let me explain that to you. Every man is supposed to be spiritually and physically adopted of the woman with the name called father. So it means that you're not permitted to marry a man of whom you don't see a father figure in. And you're not permitted to marry a woman who you don't consider as a daughter because when the father late or alive hands over his daughter to you, he is saying, this is the point where my job ends. I'm handing over this lady, this girl of mine, this daughter of mine, for you to further father. And that's why I give you the license in most cases of the world to take off my name and put your name on her. That brand, that label, that emblem called your name you put on her talks about saying to her, I father you henceforth. Your dad is done. But what am I putting on you if I don't know whose I am? Because if I don't know whose I am, I cannot transfer whose I am to you to endorse your authenticity. Now, I'm going to take you to the, um, to the Garden of Eden, which wasn't a place physical, but an experience God created. Now, when the tempter came to Eve, Eve ate of the fruit, call it apple, call it whatever fruit, we, we don't know, but she ate of what God said, don't eat of. Nothing happened, my brother. Absolutely nothing happened. She would have eaten of the whole fruit and yet nothing would have happened. You know why? She has no, no rights of legality anywhere in the world. But the moment Adam, the man, ate of the fruit, their eyes were open. Why is that? Why didn't they know? Why didn't she know she was naked when she ate it? Because, because nothing, nothing had happened. She's still under submission. But when the father figure, when the father figure endorses what she has done by by practicing with her that which God said don't do, the siege was broken. The siege, I mean, I mean, the, 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 the covering was gone. What was lacking there was the lack of the understanding of fatherhood. Adam was Eve's father, handed over to him by her original father who entrusted her to him. He failed in his fatherly responsibility, and then she taught him, rather, how to be a father by making him and thus what she created. Okay. And so my point before I yield my mic is, no man will ever live up to the fatherly reality except he goes back to the source. No plant grows without original, authentic soil. And that is the kind of soil, that the black soil that makes the plant grow. The source of every man is God the first father. Let me end with this. There is no motherhood in heaven. Not even by mistake. And so fatherhood is originally spiritually hereditary even before sex comes in. To multiply. And so, no, we will not be able to maximize the trueness, the reality of fatherhood, except we go to the source of God to teach us how fatherhood is done. Until then, we are still joking. That's, That's why, why fatherhood, fatherhood is not celebrated, celebrated because, because we, we fail to understand who we are 
and whose we are in God, and we expect accolades because we pay bills. <laughs> Kelly, thank, thank you, thank you so, so much, much for this exposition. And um, well, well, you've, you've said, said it, it. But, but yet somebody will be listening and saying, saying okay, okay, so you are, you are making reference to Adam and Eve. Eve. We, we live in today's world, world whereby, whereby, you know, society will tell you that we all have rights, right. we all, you know, enjoy privileges. privileges. And, and yet, yet the good fathers there, there, there are fathers, fathers who are doing well, well. There, there are fathers who know their, know their rights, but, but yet, yet they, they are not celebrated. celebrated. So, so let's, let's take, take it one step, step at a time. time. Are you saying that it is the fathers themselves who have failed themselves, and as a result of that, they are not being celebrated? Our fathers' fathers did not teach our fathers to teach we who have now become fathers how to teach our children who become fathers about what fatherhood is. So who taught them how to celebrate mothers? That's what I'm saying. Motherhood is a na natural instinct that gives you warmth for the rest of your... The woman is more physically there than the father, no matter how much the father works. But, but the Kelly, Bible doesn't re reward fathers who are always physically there. There's a difference between um, being there for impact and being there to be seen. Okay. okay. <clears throat> In my absence, my eight-year-old should know that even if I'm not there, this is what life should be for him. But he remembers his mother more because whether I am present or absent, she's feeling physically there, giving him all the warmth required. It's just motherly instinct. It's just mother and child and womb connection. But there's more to that, but that unfortunately all we celebrate is the connection of mutual warmth. Do you think, do you think society has not been fair to men? Aside the biblical explanation and everything that you're saying, because if I cast my mind back about two, three decades ago, Mother's Day was nothing to talk about. You know, I posted this on um, social media. And the, and the feedbacks and the responses, responses that we've had so far. Others, Others are talking about society. Some, some are talking about media. Some, some are talking about, you know, the advancement, advancement of technology. technology. And, it and it comes back, back to what you're saying. saying that, that motherhood is already, already paying, paying off. off. And, sometimes, and sometimes, you know, let me read some of the comments. Of the comments. <clears throat> One, One person says, says that the world, the world has no balance. Because... because Mothers, mothers will always, always be the, be the liked, liked ones, ones by, by the children. children. And, that and that is, is what you said earlier on by saying that the natural, natural bond is there. Is there. Another, Another person, person also says, I still don't know why it is so. For some, For some time now, men have, men have been celebrating their mothers uh, on Mother's Day. Day. Meanwhile, children, children of these same men celebrate their mother than their father. father. Is that... Is, is that, that these, these is, it is it that, that these men who accuse their, their fathers of, of not <clears throat> of, of not taking care of them, them also refuse to take care of their, their children. children? I'm, I'm yet, yet to know why. why. I'll tell you why. I'm a relationship consultant and a family advocate, either on the secular or in the body of Christ. And I tell you. The authentic way to, to celebrate, celebrate in the sight of God is to celebrate parenting, not motherhood or fatherhood. Okay. Okay. It is a the demonic demon. agenda to split the parents, to appreciate one and devalue, quote unquote, the other. God's original plan was not to celebrate fathers or mothers. God's original plan was to celebrate parents and generations. But, but what, what we, we, what we, we fail to understand now, now is that while we celebrate the mothers more, which I don't have a problem with, we are playing down or diluting the efficacy 
of transgenerational, transgenerational effects. After celebrating mothers, what next? Have we ever asked ourselves that? It ends there at a one day celebration, even though it takes three months or four months to prepare for. Because there's no after effect from that day. But when you celebrate fathers, you understand that you're not celebrating a man, you are actually celebrating a movement. A movement that should be backed by the women involved. So the actual thing to be celebrated is the spirit of parenthood, mutual parenthood. There's no single parent recorded in the scripture. There's none. There's nothing called a, uh, 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 um, a single parent, a, a single, single dad, dad, or a single mom. The Bible talks about parents. So the reason why we need to understand these things clearer is because, and I keep emphasizing the spirituality of every matter because it's the root of all things. Every uh, physical, physical manifestation, manifestation is about uh, a physical conclusion. It's been decided and it's been carried out spiritually, and we've just seen the replay in the physical. Until we understand that life in itself is spiritual, we are messing around and we will not get anything done until we leave here. Okay, Kelly, okay, Kelly. <clears throat> there, are there are two major, two major things, things I want us to, us to look at. at. One, okay. I want us to look at the mothers themselves, hmm? the, fathers, the fathers, and also, and also society. society. Right. But before, but before we, we look at, at the mothers, mothers the fathers, fathers and society, society do, you do you think, think the media, media has been biased to fathers? fathers? I, I, I think so, but I won't blame because the media. Because as much as you've given, given the expositions of, you know, the, the, the natural, natural motherhood and the fathers failing themselves, do you, do you think, think the media could have at least put, put the level pecking apart? apart? I told you it's an intentional manipulation from hell to do this. And the greatest tool of hell right now is the media. Why? So let's understand that, that primarily. The greatest, the greatest tool of hell is the airwaves because you can reach a billion people in a second just by the click of something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the airwaves, either on your phone, either on your TV set, on your radio set, it's just a click away. Now, what has the media been able to successfully do? The media has successfully been able to project the capacities of the mothers, ignoring the capacities of the fathers. And one big thing I have to lock up certain people up for because I have the capacity to do so by, 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 by right, is that you have forgotten or you are hardening the hearts of men to believe that men should not cry. <laughs> what lie is that? That is a big lie from the pit of hell. You say that men should not cry. Meanwhile, men are more deeper in, a, in, in, in emotions, but women are more deeper in expression of emotions. So a man is hurting. A man is beaten and battered. But because he is not permitted to express it, he bottles things up, becomes a vegetable version of himself, and you call him lazy. You've killed him, but exonerated his wife because she's more outspoken. What about seeing the weakness of a man and projecting his strength such that his weakness is demystified? We don't see that. But because the man is struggling to have a voice beyond his words by the action of the productivity of what he does, and it's taking time to achieve that, you downplay him and celebrate the woman who is always physically there. This is why the greatest achievement of a man, an average man, is not how many children he has. It's not even who he marries, is the quality that the result of his work produces because that feeds his ego, but that's not originally supposed to be the master plan. A man should be, first of all, a spirit being and an earthly family-oriented creature. 
to replicate the personality and the culture of God as God loves the church, so should he love his wife and his family. But we have drifted from the original plan and we are not seeing the man metamorphosed from egg to lava, from lava to pupa, from pupa to the adult, as, as in the, the case of the butterfly. butterfly. But we see what a man should just be because he's masculine. No, every man has a metamorphosis. Sometimes men cry, should cry, or should be allowed to cry. In crying is the strength that he's trying to exhibit. But when that emotion is shut down, all he does is to spend the rest of his life being a hard person, trying to prove that he is something that he already is. But we don't see what he already is. We're trying to make him do beyond what he already is. And so he goes far and beyond. And that's why most times an average man would want to exhibit who he is or enforce who he is with his fists. And that doesn't take us far. That puts us on a bad record. But before that time, our vulnerability have been ignored to the points where we have literally no voice of expression. expression. How many men will report boldly and confidently that they are being beaten by their wives or, by the, or they are being abused by their wives? We don't talk about that. But let a woman announce that a man raised a finger. He didn't hit her. Just raise a, a figure. The world will hear of it. You know why? Because women have the power of their voice and emotions to make a picture so clear how they want it to be. But the man is never here. That's why. Okay, okay so, so Kelly, this, this brings, brings me to an interesting, interesting point. point. Let's, Let's make a civil, civil rights. rights. Do you think right. women, women have been given so much than, than they needed? As a, As a result, result of that, that now women feel so much empowered. empowered. And, um, you know, all, all over the world, world I wouldn't say some part of the world. Of the world. Now, now, I mean, it's, I mean, it's spreading all over the world. world. Where, Where women are, uh, you know, protected, protected much more than, than the men. You, you made mention of the fact that, that a man, a man will not be bold, bold enough, enough to report the fact uh, that, that he or she he is being abused at home, or even if, if the two of them should, should report of domestic abuse or something, they, they would, would, you know, give a, give a softer, softer touch, touch to the woman, to the woman until, until it's, it's really, really been proven that, that well, the, well, the man, man was abused. But the, but the man, man can report, the woman can report, but first and foremost, they look with a critical eye into the man's case than the woman. Do you think civil rights has also placed, you know, the woman slightly above than the males? Um, it should be equal in my opinion because we are all humans anyway. But because, like I said, it's an agenda, we need to, and, and I hope that we really listen with a broad mind, mind just, just in, in case, case you think, think I'm against women. women. I, I have a mother, I have sisters, I have nieces, I have, I'm responsible for most of the women in my life, okay? But you see, the world wants us to understand that women should be given more, more preference and more um, whatever it may be because it's an agenda to belittle masculinity and the original agenda of God. Okay. The original agenda of God is to keep the man heading based on spiritual and physical hierarchical structure. But the empowerment that the women on the average are seeking for is not to have the ability to be taught by the men, but to have equal um, rights as the men. That is not wrong, because the Bible did not say that a man is better than a woman, or a woman is better than a man. In the spirit, we are all the same, and so we are equal. But the goalpost shifts when marriage gets involved outside the the context of marriage every man is equal to every woman in the sight of god i don't subscribe to saying that only men should preach women should sit down somewhere or women should sit at the back of the auditorium that is demonic and must be aborted 
every woman has the right to do everything a man should do at the temple. But what the women are soliciting for, which I tell you is demonic, is that they are soliciting for equal rights, rights. including the marital institution institutionalized by no human but God himself. There is no marital institution, institution or constitution, constitution that is greater than the one who founded it. I don't care your culture. I don't care your nation. Whatsoever they say that a marriage should be, contrary to what the biblical standard is, amounts to zero. zero. We, will we will not, not have, have a, a better, better society, society for one, one second, second using that platform or tangent. It's always said, a man is accountable to God while the woman is accountable to the man. So it is the woman unto her husband and her husband unto Christ and even Christ unto God. It's hierarchical. So we, they, they ignore that because, because they, don't they don't know. Because their fathers didn't teach them while they were younger girls. So when they grow up as as, 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 as we men, they see that, oh, why should a man have so-so and so-and-so and I don't have so-so and so? It should be equal. Very well, I give you that, but don't bring it into marriage. A man by the leadership of the Holy Ghost in him is the one who has the final say on, on, on the, the affairs, affairs of the home. As long as you said, I do to him, the Bible, the, the Bible says in the, in the book of Ephesians that the woman should submit to the man in what? Not some things, not, not most things, things not, not a few things, things but, but everything. But the man also should love unconditionally the wife as, the, as Christ loves the church. Now, that's a huge responsibility if you ask me. me. And it's almost impossible to be frank, for a man to love his wife as Christ loves the church. So we are busy trying to find how a man should genuinely love his wife as Christ loves the church. That's enough big responsibility, which very, very few Christians, even Christians and clergy, are trying to keep up to. And now you're adding equality to it, even in marriage, because you know you're right. What civil rights? There's no civil rights outside the biblical constitution of how a home should be run. So civil rights is still under biblical rights, and so biblical rights stand a higher call downplaying the civil rights which is human created. Okay, okay Kelly, Kelly <clears throat> let, me let me just read, read a few messages, messages I, have I have here. Right. This, this is, is from, from Betty Akon on Facebook. He says, says, I think our generation of fathers are doing extremely well and, and need to, to be applauded for their, their work. work. Hence, Hence, we, we need, need to celebrate them, but the fact is, is history, history is history. That, that is why, why the silence, silence continues. continues. Who created the history? <laughs> the <laughs> history was the primary agenda of the... <laughs> I, I, I hope, hope that God opens our... Well, God is willing to open our eyes, but I hope we are willing that God opens our eyes to see how we got ourselves here. That wasn't the original plan. That was not the original plan. Okay. okay. Kelly, Kelly, do you think the women, women also, also have, have not helped, helped at, all at all in this case? case? Well, absolutely so. Because, of course, they get the credit for it, which, which I, I don't, don't mind. mind. But when you say happy... Mother's Day, a true woman should point to her husband and tell the children, Daddy made it so. Wow. But we don't get, get that. that. They, they take, take the accolades, accolades, they take the gifts, they take the kisses and hugs, it ends there. But I've never, maybe after now, I've never found a woman praised by her children and neighbors, neighbors and, and community, community when they say happy mother's day and she says oh thank my husband he gives me the peace to be the best mother i could ever be do we get that do we get to hear that that would crack the internet that, that would, would blow the roof 
that would be something to go viral about, but we never get that. Okay. It's not the women's fault. They just weren't well trained from scratch. Period. <laughs> okay. okay. This, this one is also coming, coming from Lawrence. He says, says mothers and society have painted fathers as wicked towards the children. The children. Until, Until you become, become a man, you will never, never know and understand, understand some, some things. things. This, this one is coming from Lawrence. Lawrence. Uh, and um, this, this one, one is also from Henry Owusu. He says, it's sad. No, no one, one that we are building up nonchalant fathers. fathers. These are, are all comments, comments which are coming from, from Facebook. Facebook. Um, um, let, let me also, you know, you know change the tone, tone of discussion, discussion now. now. I did, I did mention of society. society. We've looked, looked at the fathers, fathers themselves, and we, we want, want to now look at media. media. Regardless, Regardless of how however we put it, Media, media has, has played a role in, in hyping, hyping this Mother's, Mother's Day stuff and, and then not doing the same to the fathers. fathers. You've said, said that, that it's, an, it's, an it's an agenda of the enemy to belittle or bring down fathers. fathers. But, but what, what do you think can be done as at this, this time and, and day and age that we live in? Because, because we, all we all have access to the media. media. The, the very, very same, same way you see people posting on social media. media. And, and the amazing thing is, when we started this Father's Day campaign thing, I had men even texting to us, oh, oh when is Father's, Father's Day? Day? And I'm like, wow. To that, to that extent. extent. And, and then some, some even mothers will text and say, when is Father's, Father's Day? I've forgotten the date. So, so how, how do you think we can use the media to, to propagate and at least... If, if not, not be a par, keep, keep the pegging moving hand in hand, so that regardless of you know, you know the, the you know the bad, bad image fathers have been painted, painted there, are there are still good fathers out there. there. I tell you what, use the media, media to, to gradually bring up, up to speed, and also, and also change, change the mindset of the runaway fathers and even the bad ones. Okay, I'll tell you. Um, he that plays the pipe dictates the tune. Do you agree? Definitely. Right. Let me say this, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm willing, willing to be stoned for this. <laughs> the media do, does not love our mothers. The media works with what the market is. Okay. okay. If we tilt to the fathers, the media camera lenses will no longer be on the mothers. It will go to the fathers. So society dictates to media yeah. what they should hide. Okay. So if the authenticity of what should be done starts from our homes, I'm not saying go to the media to talk about this. Let's, let's see, I don't know how many people are watching, but let let everyone who is watching just decide to do it right, to change the narrative, and you will see the media changing from Mother's Day to Father's Day. We don't even want it to be more Father's Day than Mother's Day. We just want it to be proper parenting day, if there's a day to be celebrated for that <laughs> end. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you celebrate God every day, why would you celebrate his product once a year? It okay. should not be a, a yearly thing. It should be a daily thing. However, if we decide, dictate to the media what they should play on their stations with our resources, the, the media is going for where, where the, the resource, resource is, is, where, where the, the money is. is. Yeah. So if we must change their narrative, let's use our money too. Let's use our resources too. Let's use our influences too. But they had... Who pays the bill? That's the truth. The media houses hide those who pay the bill and then silence those who have the authenticity of the message, the true content. That's what happens. So, and that's why the church must buy off every media station they can and, and then put the real message out there. The, the educated, educated church, church, by the way, 
because now the body of Christ is in a very, very interesting place. <laughs> okay, okay, Kelly, so I have, so I have a, message a message from Florence, Florence that, that says that, taking my home as an, as an example, example, my husband is very responsible, but he is never, never around. The children know only mommy. How, How can they be excited about something they know nothing about? I know it's work. I know it's work to be done. But, but do, you do you think a mother, a mother can, can totally, totally be absent from a child's life because, because she has to work? work? Let, Let fathers, fathers make conscious effort to be part of their children's life. Most, Most modern, modern fathers, fathers are doing well, no doubt, but it will take time to get where mothers are. are. The, the gap, gap is big. big. That is true and not true. And this is why. Mm -hmm. The best way to love your children is to take care of their mother. Not to pay bills, not to do any of those things which are very, very, very important, but to win a child's heart truthfully is to love on the mother. If you love on your wife rightly, your wife, no matter how long you are absent, will speak the best of you to the children and even when the children say, daddy is never around, say, yes, he is out for us. That's the missing link. So if you want to have a right impression or right legacy in the hearts of your children, it's not just about being present. How do you treat their mother? What is their mother's opinion of you? It's their mother's opinion of you the children live with. That has been downplayed too. So you don't become a father by paying bills and being more around. There are very, very, very um, uh, present fathers, but the wives and children wish they were absent so they can breathe. So the authenticity of the case is, treat your wife as Christ would love the church and watch your wife speak fantastic of you in your absence such that the children have nothing, nothing wrong, wrong to say about your so-called absenteeism because truthfully fatherhood is influence fatherhood is not necessarily physical or present it's influence and influence is more, more in the, the heart, heart than in the eyes okay Kelly, Kelly. let, let me, me move to, to another, another issue, issue that has been, been in the, in the public, public eye, eye the, the reason, reason why, why fatherhood has nothing, nothing to talk about. about. But, but fathers, run away, run away fathers. fathers. Fathers who have not been there. there. Fathers, fathers who deliberately ignore or neglect their, their responsibilities. responsibilities. I, at some point in my life, thought that the media or society and the quest to, like, you know, pacify or make women feel comforted, decided to give them privileges to the extent where, you know, some parts of where we live, if a man, a single parent, man, and a single parent, woman, should go looking for privileges, obviously the woman gets first before the man and even if the man goes the tendency of the man getting that privilege is just about 10 percent but the woman has almost about 97 98 chance of getting it what am i driving at we are looking at instances where mothers have to go through the pain of child upbringing the pain of parenting just because a man has you know put a dagger or a sword in their heart out of the love they gave they did not receive that love back and so mothers will barely speak good about some fathers especially those who are not there and some mothers will not even say anything at all so the children or the family grows up seeing only the mother seeing her going up and down doing all the chores the you know the sweating everything and so why wouldn't they appreciate their mother? Why wouldn't society um, or the media move towards that? Because that is the sales drive. Everybody would like to appreciate their mother. 
And, and so, so if we take that, that as you know, you know an opportunity, opportunity we, can we can drive sales. sales. Let's, let's put, put adverts there, shops, shops are coming, you know, you know let's, let's make, make you know, uh, programs, programs and, and people, people will definitely attend. attend. How, How many shops, shops will put, put, you know, hampers and, and all those stuff out there that we are making Father's Day sales? Like, like you said, you will, you will run at a loss. loss. So, so do, do you think that the mothers, mothers are being, you know, you know celebrated well, well because, because of the, the position sometimes, sometimes they see themselves? themselves. Aside, Aside all the explanations we've given, given let's, let's look at it from, from this angle. angle. Do, you Do you think they are being celebrated because of the position and the circumstance they find themselves? Practically speaking, without being so much of a spiritual fanatic, um, it's sad to say or to admit that women are more trained to know about the home than men are, even from toddlers. A woman, a girl, begins to be given teddy bears as toys. The, the, the child plays with the bear, teddy bear as a mother already, feeds the teddy bear, baths the teddy bear, naturally because that's how they want the child to grow. Get up, you sweep, you clean, you do that. You don't talk to a man like this, da 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 da, D do this and that. So before the woman gets a man, she has automatically, by parental or by societal influences, been taught what is expected of her as a woman, or as a mother, or as a wife. The man in return is given guns as toys. <laughs> Everything else but proper education. And what they tell the man is, go and make money. Go and get, get a, a job. job. Now, the man, the child grows into a man and all the man has in mind to authenticate who he is in, in the home and society is pay the bills, pay the bills, pay the bills. Defend yourself, defend yourself, defend yourself. And so by instinct, a man's ego is boosted by, by the, the result, result he gets from his job and how he can prove that his ego cannot be stepped upon. Nothing of, uh, of, 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 of family is instilled into the, 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 the average man. So, so the, the average, average man, man doesn't think about family. The average man thinks about work and results and defense. Work and results and defense. That's all the average. I say average because that's, that's, what, what, it, it, that, 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 that's what it is. The average man wants to get a good job to get enough money to authenticate who he is and then to defend what he has built. Let me say this. The average man, I realize as a family advocate, the average man does not take his children to the best schools, not just because they want to have the best education. But, but because, because he, he wants, wants to, to feed his ego among his colleagues so that they applaud him that he has sent his children to the most expensive schools possible. That is the wrong approach. If a woman wants to choose the best school for, for her, her, for, for her, her um, child, however, she'll be looking at proximity. She'll be looking at who are the teachers she be teaching. She 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 she'll be asking, asking herself, herself, what, what are, are the, the values, values of this school? A man would hardly ever do that much research. What's the most expensive school in town? That one? Okay, is that where the ministers go to? Is that the, is that is that where the members of parliament go to? Okay, my child is going there. 
just so that his ego is boosted, just so that he is called a man. That's the problem. And so they both grow up, women grow up to be, to have the instinct, instinct of, of home. home. Men grow up to have the instinct of advancement. There's a difference between growth and advancement. Growth talks about naturally becoming a better version of who you are from the inside. Advancement is what you create, the impression you want others to have of you. So women want growth, men want advancement. Both of them are okay, but if they don't come together to strike a balance, that's where the problem lies. Kelly, this, Kelly, is, this getting is getting interesting. interesting. <clears throat> and um, now, now let's, let's look, look at, at for the sake, sake of time, time let's, let's begin, begin to move towards what, what can be done, done or in your, your perception, perception, what do you think needs to be done? done. It cannot, it cannot be solved within, within a day, day or this discussion alone cannot, cannot solve it. But what do you think is the way forward? How, How do we approach, approach this issue? The first way to approach it is the understanding of the power of dependence. Let's kill this thing called independence. I can do it all by myself. I can do it all by myself. <laughs> Nothing can be done in a child's life as more beautiful than parenting. Dual parenting. <clears throat> if you understand that, you will be careful as a woman who deserves the spread of your legs? If you understand that as a man, you'll be careful who you share, who you give the best of you to, knowing that it doesn't end there. If I must go into a woman, I must go into a woman that I am sure can build with me such that what becomes the outcome of what we are doing together becomes a mutual, um, workable, successful result. Not, okay, as long as, if she wants to go, she goes, she, she, she just give me children. No. A man is too ego-driven to say, give me my, my children, children and you can walk away. away. You have taken 80% of their lives off. And the 20% left will never, ever be sufficient, no matter what they become in life. I am a relationship consultant and family advocate today, by the, the grace, grace of, of God. God. But 99% of why I am who I am is because I did not have the privilege of enjoying what I now teach others to have. So yes, I might be accomplished, accomplished in my in little space, but till tomorrow, I still wish I had the father figure in my life who I only saw four times in all of his lifetime before he finally passed. Okay. So let us go to independence and say, no, let us do it together. Yes, some spouses will be difficult and all that. That's why it starts from choosing. Who am I fathering my children with? Before you even think about that, who shares with me my body? If you're not of the same values with me, I should not be having sex with you. So I should not allow you to come into my life until we share same values. Because what if pregnancy comes? How do we deal with these things? It starts with making sure you are not unequally yoked to the non-believer. What does that mean? Now, being an unequally yoked with an unbeliever does not mean that you do not marry a sinner or, or someone, someone who is not, who's a, not Christian. a Christian. It talks about values. 
What are your parental values? These are the things that should be talked about in relationships. By the way, you can follow me at Kelly Daniels Office on Instagram and Facebook, Kelly, Kelly Daniels, Daniels, because I'm, I'm going to be sharing, sharing most of these things even after now. There are a lot of things you can learn from there. Who am I settling for? Because I'm going to raise another generation. Look, my grandparents have made the mistake. My parents have made the mistake. The mistake must end with me. And it must start with who I am bringing into my space. What values do I, am I upholding, first of all? And what is the mutuality between your values and my values? Until, Until we have the same values, values, we will produce children who have no values. And those zero values will be taken from generation to generation and the decadence will get worse. Okay, okay. Kelly, Kelly, let me read just, just um, two, two messages. messages. One, One says, this, says, is, this coming is coming from, from Franklin. Franklin. It says, it says that, um, it says, it says that, that there is too, too many and, and much isms, isms in, in society. society. And, and I, I believe that society has been the major cause why fathers have been, have been silently driven to the back house. house. Today, today we see, see today, today we see feminism, sexism, sexism racism, racism, individualism, and, and a whole isms, isms around. around. As, As a, result a result of that, that Women, women and society now feel that they are empowered on their own and they can do whatever they choose to. That is coming from Franklin. Let me read the next one, which is coming from Joyce. Joyce says that my husband, my husband, very typical, will always say, oh, you know, I like things to be done very quietly. I don't, I don't like, like too much, much noise, and, and I, I always, always like, like my things simple. As, As a, a result, result, we find it difficult to celebrate him. Let's start from the isms. Yes. yes. I know about the isms, but none of those isms are attached to the authentic, original, original agenda, agenda, which is to do things according to God's master plan. Remember, I start, said saying that it all starts from the ignorance of who we are and whose we are. But, but before, before you go, go there, Kelly, do you think civilization, civilization has, has also played, played a role? role? What's a civilization? Doing things outside God's original plan with his content or creating a content outside or antagonistic to God's content. content. Anything outside God's original content of why the world was created and mankind was created to be fruitful, multiply the earth, dominion, and all of that is antagonistic, is antichrist to what we should be living by. So civilization so back to, back to the point, point where you're, you're saying, saying that it is all an agenda, agenda to, to just all an agenda. Eliminate. There's nothing called civilization outside building upon what the solid rock of humanity should be and thus and uh, founded by God himself. Anything, Anything outside, outside the, the God, God agenda, agenda is, is a demonic agenda. agenda. Now I'm, I'm back to my spirituality because the truth is we can't take spirituality exactly. out and exactly. live in truth. Exactly. No matter how you, 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 you play around it, the forces, Katusa, the powers that control the media, yeah. the powers that control the, the cosmos, yeah. yeah, the powers that control that almost determine how much breath you should take are primarily on a perpetual daily meeting on how to prepare the ground for the Antichrist to manifest. We cannot ignore, ignore this. this. And assume that, oh, when we treat our husbands right or when we treat our wives right, things will be fine. In fact, regardless of that, the enemy will still do what he will do. However, until we go back to what is God saying? What is the original plan of God concerning this matter? We'll keep using our ideas to find out ways and means to exonerate this and downplay that. The original plan of God not established will we'll continue, continue to bring in decadence because we did not give birth to ourselves let the one who created us 
dictate to us how our lives will be run. Otherwise, we keep make, making a generational mess of who we are. Okay. okay. So, what, so what about, about Joyce? Joyce, who says, who says that, that the husband, husband wants things to be done, done always calm, calm and, and simple. simple? Calm and simple doesn't erode um, accolades. God wants things calm and simple. God doesn't promote himself, but God will never be God in your life if you, if, if you, if you deny him of praise. God can't live without praise. Praise is the, is the nutrition of God. Praise is God's oxygen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The more he is praised, the more of himself he manifests. So the less of your husband you praise, the less of who he should be he exhibits to you, even if he doesn't want it. God did not ask Solomon to be praised by his, I mean, Solomon to praise him by the by sacrifices, sacrifices he gave. Solomon, Solomon realized, ah, I did not get here by myself. Let me praise the one who gave me who, yeah. I mean, the position I, 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 I occupy. Yeah. It's an ungrateful person who doesn't have praise in his mouth. So yes, my husband wants it cool, calm, and collected. But what, what are, you are you doing, doing even, even in that coolness, in that calmness? Does he see your appreciation? Does he see your accolades? Does he see the fact that he is he is he is adored, worshipped, and regarded as the man in the house, or you just see it as it's it's, it's normal. normal. It's not normal to have breath in our nostrils. Don't think that thing is normal. There are people who are willing to pay for it and still can't afford it. So there's no there's there's no opinion into silent treatment of what a man has done right. If he's a good man, let the world know. Okay, okay, Kelly. Kelly. Thinking, Thinking back, back to where, where we, we started, started from, from. Right. you mentioned from, from the Garden, Garden of Eden, Eden where, where the father, father figure itself failed in the, in the beginning. beginning. All right. All right. My, understanding My understanding of scripture, scripture and, now and now you, you, are, you are making, making me also come, come into the biblical. The biblical. My, My understanding right. of scripture is that it, it took the woman to agree to the serpent to also make man fail. But Unto, Unto that, that point, point, man, if, if had established his fatherhood right, right could, have could have chastised the woman and said, listen, the, the father who is, who is my father who created me and out of me you also came, said, said we shouldn't do this. this. So why, so why are, are you doing, doing that? that? But, but I believe that is my understanding. My understanding is that I believe because the man loved the woman, he adhered to what the the woman, the woman gave, gave him. him. And like, and like you said, said yeah. it was after the man or the father confirmed or agreed to it that they both realized that they were naked. naked. Because, because until then, the man, the man could, could not see the woman naked, naked. but it was after he also ate it. There was, there was no point in the Bible that, that says after that that, that, that the man blamed the woman. The woman. <clears throat> I know when, when um, God, God came, came and said, why have you done that? that? The, the man blamed, blamed the woman. And that. But, but after, after they, they were driven from, from the garden, that is where I'm talking about. The man, the man did not ask the woman to leave his side because you have caused me to sin. sin. But, but then the Bible makes us understand that they both were driven and they both left. So the, so the man, man had every reason to accuse the woman. But because the man loved the woman, the man did not accuse the woman. Do you, Do you think, think that, that in reciprocating that, that women, women have, have not been fair to men? To men? Because, because in as much as society and the media is propagating and taking them, them to a different level, they could have equally stood, like you said, like you said earlier on, and, and educate the younger ones, ones coming, tell, tell them that, listen, I am, I am your mother, mother because of the father. father. And, and I am here because of the love I had, I had for, for your father. father. And, and you see, this, this afternoon, afternoon I was teaching somewhere and I said, regardless of your current parental circumstances, you have, you have become, become a mother and he's also become a father based on one, one condition, condition, the condition of love. Love, love brought about fatherhood and motherhood. And motherhood. So, do so do you think, regardless, regardless of the pain, regardless of the, pain, regardless of the treatment, regardless of everything, that mothers have not been fair in, in reciprocating the hype, the, the celebration, and everything they get also for the men. 
That is absolutely true, a million percent, but there's a clause to it. Okay. Okay. When you say love, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is my field, right? No, so no, no, I mean, go, go ahead. ahead. The authenticity of love hinges on the culture of God. You cannot love your wife so much. You cannot claim to love your wife so much and displease the origin or the culture of love. There's something called rebuke, correction in love. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Yeah. Yeah. The, the rod is not a stick to use to, be, uh, to beat who has faulted. faulted. The rod is the word of correction to say, uh uh, this is right, this is wrong. Yeah. Where Adam failed was uh, to insist that the fruit was not eaten. Of course, he said, is it not what God said we should not eat? Yeah. Yeah. A question is not a correction. Authority given to, to you by God is to have dominion, yeah. Yeah. not share dominion. Oh, have dominion, not share dominion. Yeah. Yeah. What he did at the Garden of Eden was contrary to the order of God as, as he, he shared, shared dominion. dominion. Yeah. Yeah. When you share dominion, the one who gave you the dominion, look, 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 look. When God came, Mm-hmm. He did not ask anybody else yeah, what, what went, went wrong. wrong. He, he asked, asked the, the one, one who he man, gave man. the dominion to. Yeah. Yeah. The one who he placed in charge. What happened? Ah, You are taking me somewhere, this man. God said, uh, uh, Adam said, it, it is, is the, the woman, woman you gave to me. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Shift of authority. Haradushifakata. When the woman was asked what happened, shift of authority, it was a serpent. When the serpent was confronted, the serpent never shifted responsibility anymore. Yeah. Till today, the serpent dominates the earth. Wow. Lack of responsibility. Yeah. yeah makes you lose the authenticity of your authority to the one who takes the blame. Mm-hmm. Ah. You, you, you are Kelly, doing let's something. Go. Let's, let's, go. Go. let's, let's go. go. Let's go. God said, young man, I put you in charge of this garden. Yeah. What has gone wrong? wrong? If Adam at that time has said, boss, I, I'm, this one, I'm sorry. Actually, I, I, I take responsibility for it. You told me to be in charge, but uh, my emotions took over my my, 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 my my sense of judgment and I fell. Please have mercy. God would not have said, no, you are condemned. Yeah. yeah. But he shifted. Who taught him to shift blame? It is the effect of the seed, ungodly seed he took, manifesting. Mm-hmm. But if he had allowed the authoritative culture delivered to him by God to manifest, he would have said, ah, spill what you have eaten out now. Yeah. Yeah. And never ever flaunt God's instruction again. Do only what you see me do because Because I am your father, I am your head, I am in charge here. I dictate what should happen because I receive also from God. Mm -hmm. So if God hasn't told me to tell you to do do something, something, you don't don't do it. So do only what I say and do what you see me do. He didn't do that. He allowed his emotion. That, that, that's why I'm trying to define what love is. It wasn't out of his love for her. It was a, 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 an emotional default that made him accept that. And so he lost authority. The wife, the woman lost authority. And now the enemy took the authority because the enemy blamed nobody. Listen, that's why till today, the end, the, the Bible says, I don't know how it could be said, your feet will bruise his head 
and his head will bruise his heel. That is why the devil is against the seed of the woman till today. <laughs> and we are now today the seeds of the woman. Yeah. Yeah. Taking away the relevance of the man, of the head. Wow, the wow. target, target is, is to demystify the personality of the head and keep at war the, 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 the friction between the enemy and the seed of the woman because the man has lost his authority. <laughs> so what we should be dealing with now is further restore my original glory. Mm. Restore what I lost by the legitimate legitimacy of your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Until fatherhood is restored by the, the original, original plan, plan, we are joking. <laughs> A woman will not submit to a man who doesn't have results. And no child will submit, submit to, to parents, parents who don't have living proof. It's all about results. What are you bringing to the table? So the man goes to God, reconnects with, with God, God, reconciles, reconciles with, with God, God, realigns with God, and God always has the next instruction to give to restore the original order. Until then, that's why I said it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's, an, it's an agenda, agenda from, from hell God. to truncate the home, to make sure homes don't stand, but everybody stands on their own. That's why, why everybody, everybody believes they can, can succeed, succeed without or with. Oh, yeah, I, I can take care of my children. So you both had the, the sex. sex. You, you, both, you, you both exchanged the organism. But when the children come, oh, they are my children. The mantra says they are my children. Mind the way you handle my children. Because the enemy has put a seed of violence between the woman's seed and the head of the, of, of the serpent. We are at war, my brother. And until we agree that there's war, we will keep on ranting about who, who should, should be, be celebrated, celebrated who, who should, should not be, be celebrated, celebrated, where's the equilibrium. The, 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 the whole issue is the fact that we are at war. Let go, let's go back to the drawing board. What was God's original plan? For solution? That is the solution. Go back to the, to the original plan and stick to the original plan. For, For solution, go, go back, back to the original plan, plan said by none other than Kelly Daniels. Daniels. Kelly Daniels Daniel is, is a professional and international, international relationship consultant and family, family advocate. advocate. Need, Need I, I say more? more. This, has this has been the program, program title, Why is Father's, Father's Day a Silent Celebration? celebration. And, and today, today, I have, I have come, come to the realization, realization that, that it is not a matter of the men not being celebrated or the, or the women, women being wicked. wicked. As, As others will also say, because of the wickedness of men and fatherhood, that is, that is why they are not being celebrated. celebrated. But, but it, it is because the original plan of God, of God be, be the head, head, head at the, At the very, very beginning, beginning and the basics, basics was broken. broken. Man, Man could, could not, not live up to, up to the responsibility, the authenticity of the authority God has given him by passing it over onto the woman. And the woman also passing it over onto whoever is manipulating this occurrence. And as, and as a, a result, result of that, that when, when man, man passed, passed it on to the woman, woman now the, the woman, woman had an upper, upper hand over the man. If we are thinking, thinking of finding solutions to it, it there's, there's one, one way we can go. go. And, and there's somewhere we should always start, start going, going back, back to the basis. basis. The, the very, very original, original plan of God. God. Just, Just as Kelly said, we need to restore our dignity. 
How, How can we restore the dignity and the authority God gave us? By going back to the source, by going back to the Father, the one who made it all, the one who began it all. That is where we need to go. So today, in as much as we blame society, we blame media, we blame everything, it is the plan which is being executed. The enemy wanted it to be like this, and as a result, came through to the woman, knowing that if he had gone to the man first, maybe, I don't know what would have happened, but he used the woman to get, to get to the man, man and, and give, give the, the woman the hype and the upper hand over, over the man. man. Well, well, if you, if you had, had any questions you want to add, you can send them to all the respective media you are watching or listening to us because this is not the end. This is just the beginning. I've been here with Kelly Daniels. Like I said, he's a professional and international relationship consultant and family advocate. He does a lot. He's a graduate of the World of Faith Bible Institute, WOFBI. The, the clergy academic, academic division of the Bishop Oye Depot Ministries, known, known as Winner's Chapel. Chapel. He, he also is the founding president of the Kelly Daniels Love Academy, Academy with, with hundreds, hundreds of students graduating with a, with a basic, basic love, love leadership certificate, certificate advanced love, love leadership certificate, and mature love, love certificate. certificate. Kelly, how, how can someone, someone listening to us this afternoon get, get in touch, touch with you? With you? Well, um, thank you very much again for having me. It's been, um, it's been, you almost got me somewhere. <laughs> I appreciate it. Really, and, and, and that is why we need, we need to leave, leave it here because, because the second, second edition, edition will be coming soon. soon. So, 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 uh, because I, because so I believe this, 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 this education, education is not a one day forum. Uh, and this, this education, education is a continuous thing. thing. We, we need right. to go back, back to the basics. basics. So, so, well, I can be reached on Instagram at Kelly Daniels Office. Just simple, Kelly Daniels Office. Kelly and Daniels, Daniels together, together, no space, space, and then the office, just as one word. Kelly Daniels Office on Instagram. On um, Facebook, I'm simply uh, just Kelly Daniels. Just look for Kelly Daniels, and I am there. Um, the WhatsApp number you can reach me on is actually on the Instagram, Instagram profile. profile. And so that's that's how to reach me. And I will be available to you, maybe not immediately, but certainly. So just keep pushing and we will, we will get in touch. Okay. okay. Kelly, Kelly, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us, joining us today. today. We'll, we'll be live on Faith, Faith Channel, Channel Radio here in the United, United Kingdom, Kingdom. Supreme, Supreme Praise, Praise Radio as well, as well. Facebook, Facebook on the, the NYG, NYG ministry. ministry. And, and then, then on, on um, YouTube, YouTube is, is also NYG, NYG ministry. ministry. And, and this program has been proudly put together by, by NYG, NYG ministry, ministry and Kelly Daniels office. office. If, if you have, have any family issues, issues and you want to reach out to him, like I said, on Instagram is Kelly Daniels Office and on Facebook is Kelly Daniels. This is just the beginning of the many things that we will be looking at and discussing. The next topic for our discussion is where did it all go wrong? Today we've identified where it went wrong, but the next time we want to go to the very fundamentals of how, how it all went, went wrong. wrong. Join at the same time. time. It's, it's been, been a pleasure, pleasure having you, especially with, with your time this afternoon, afternoon. Father's Day, Day on the program, program Why is Father's Day, Day a silent celebration? I've had, I've had with me Kelly Daniels, Daniels who joined me all the way from Accra, Ghana, and, and myself, Nana, Nana Yao George. You can also follow me on Facebook at Nana Yao George NYG. Or on Instagram is NYG Official. NYG Official on Instagram. You can also follow us on Facebook at um, Faith Channel Radio and Supreme Praise Radio. And on YouTube is NYG ministry. Until, Until then, then Kelly, Kelly, any, any final, final words, words before I close, close the chapter for today? Always, always, always ask what would God's opinion about this be before you get it executed? Except we remain on the master plan, we are joking. We are comedians. Let's get stuck to the master plan of God. God. I, I want, want to, to do so and so and so. Okay, but what is God saying? What's God's opinion about this? That's the safest way to live. 
God has given us the grace to have ideas, but only ideas aligned to his will is what he will endure for execution. Let's, Let's never forget, forget that. that. Let's, never, Let's forget never forget what God's original plan is for our life. And that is to say that whatever you do, no matter what you do, remember your creator. Remember that somebody gave you what you have. And if you are struggling in any way, you, you always, always go, go back, back to the source. source. Until, Until then, then it's bye for now. And thank you so very much for making time to listen to today's broadcast. broadcast. The Lord be with you and the Lord keep you safe. Bye, bye for now. Amen.